The central report specifically adopted a three-pronged approach to poverty and it looked at three aspects of the um, of poverty. Um, and specifically all of those aspects were based on a notion of the state being responsible to the citizens for a, a basic level of well-being and material and material provision. Um, and it identified groups that were specifically disadvantaged. So it took a kind of a, a collective response, a, a macro response, a non-individualist response to, to poverty. Um, and that general approach of looking at groups and seeing um, how they were affected necessarily. Uh, it, it's not a sociological work in any sense, but the, there are clear kind of embedded assumptions which are kind of sociological, that are, if you like, structural uh, within its thinking, the argumentation. So focus on groups, um, the, and then from focusing on groups, looking at specific areas of law that even though individuals may be treated as formally equal, like banks and their clients, uh, employers and employees, producers and consumers, that the structure of those rules led, led to substantive inequality and exploitation and ultimately fostered, uh, caused, uh, um, contributed to uh, inequality. And then finally it looked at the legal system itself. What is it about this institution that <coughs> bears harshly on poor people? Is it it's the way it operates, the, the way the profession operates, the structure of the courts. Um, to what extent is this an institution that operates for the whole of society or for a small group of it? Um, and the, the report came up with a, a number of um, critical recommendations, um, um, specifically that, uh, um, as far as the legal system, the first focus, um, it's urged for a rapid expansion of access to justice at all levels. Um, it, the, the, um, as far as the formal legal system was concerned, it advocated, it recommended that there be a rapid expansion of legal aid uh, because the way in which the courts are structured, the way the lawyers are paid, um, the, the formal legal system was essentially inaccessible to poor people. So only if there was systematic expansion of legal aid across the civil law as well as the criminal law could poor people be seen to be um, adequately um, uh, included within, within the operation of law. Um, underneath that, there's a, um, throughout the report, um, there are something like 146 recommendations in the report, but there are, there are probably close to two dozen which specifically relate to legal procedures and specifically the setting up of tribunals, um, making um, justice uh, more, um, make it cheap, firstly cheaper, quicker, and more efficient, um, and more open to ordinary people, and limit the role of lawyers within um, uh, various tribunals and so on. So that. Um, as far as the legal system itself is concerned, a much more multi-layered and much more accessible regime was recommended. Uh, as in the area specific, specific areas of law, um, the, 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 the report focused on four specific areas, landlord and tenants law, because as the, the report emphasized, um, most poor people uh, are tenants. Um, or uh, live in um, precarious accommodation, forms of accommodation. Uh, and to do anything, if you wanted to address poverty, um, then some better set of laws need to be introduced to, to protect tenants. Uh, basically, in 1975, the, um, the legal regime that governed landlord-tenant law was con private contract. So the, the more powerful par party, the landlord, typically uh, would determine what the contents of the contract were. And because the laws were operated within the normal court system, any tenant that complained about the, the breach by the landlord, the, land, the contracts were, geared, were heavily 
if you're in favour of the landlord in any of these, but uh, the tenants' rights were um, procedurally very difficult to enforce, and they were minimal to start with. Um, as far as consumers were concerned, again, uh, hardly any consumer protection law, no consumer credit legislation operated at that time, so banks, loan sharks, um, all manner of uh, people engaged in finance had largely unrestricted power over tenants. And the courts were geared to the enforcement of debts uh, in a very severe way, so you could be imprisoned for debt, for example, at that time. Um, as far as Social Security was concerned, again, there was the, the idea up until once, um, until a welfare state becomes institutionally established and becomes part of a nation's uh, fabric, um, uh, welfare is seen as a privilege. Uh, um, the, the very strong emphasis that comes out of the sector report is that welfare is a right, and that welfare recipients have got a legal right to uh, appeal against decisions of welfare agencies. And so they recommended the establishment of the Social Security Appeals Tribunal and also legal aid to assist um, uh, claimants in their disputes with um, departments of Social Security. A uh, very important um, uh, advance. And then as far as the criminal law was concerned, um, the, the, again, looking at disadvantaged groups saw that uh, particularly indigenous people, but largely poor people through these 19th century laws against vagrancy, against homelessness, against begging, against drunkenness in a public place. 50% um, of the population of jails uh, were filled with people who committed these kinds of offences. So the, the, the report said this is um, basically punishing people because they are poor. We need to sweep away um, those laws. And, uh, and then, of course, by the, the disadvantaged groups they focused on were migrants, uh, indigenous people, and uh, children. Uh, and uh, again, that's a kind of sign of, of the time um, that uh, um, the, the report does look very dated. Now you look at there's absolutely no reference anywhere in the, in the 400 or so pages to gender. Um, uh, um, and uh, now, of course, as we know, that uh, uh, poverty is has a gender dimension, as 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 as, as other as all well, the social issues do, as well. But uh, in any event, <coughs> it's uh, well, so there are uh, significant uh, oversights in that in the report. But nonetheless, at the time, it was it was quite a radical document, um, particularly radical because. Um, it, uh, technical legal thing, the, the federal government didn't have power over lots of the areas of law that the, 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 the law, uh, law and poverty report addressed. I mean, this, these are basically arguments, normally a, a report commissioned by a government is a report back to the government, so it can then implement rules if it's convinced by the arguments. But this unusually was a report that was crafted uh, not for the government that commissioned it, but in fact for the, the government, the only governments who could constitutionally implement these laws, the criminal laws, the consumer law, the tenancy law, and so on. <clears throat> so it was unusual to that extent. But uh, if you look at the scorecard of the report, it, it was remarkably successful. Um, in the area of um, legal aid provision, for example, the Australian Legal Aid Office was established by the Woodland government and had this, this office provided funding to uh, legal aid um, commissions based in each of the states and territories. Um, and the states themselves, um, in addition to establishing these agencies, put substantial resources into them. Um, so that, um, that had a significant effect on making uh, the legal system more accessible. As far as tenancy were concerned, 37 specific recommendations made, 34 of them in relation to private tenancy, um, three of them in relation to tenancies in of public housing, um, and basically 30, 36 of them were recommended. The 37th I'll come to a little later as a very important missing link. Um, but uh, the across all of the states and territories, starting with South Australia in 1978, um, all of the states and territories introduced um, 
tenancy, residential tenancy laws. And the two distinctive features of the tenancy law is that there's a tribunal where lawyers are generally forbidden uh, to appear representing parties. Um, so that means that they're cheap, they're quick, they're accessible, um, comparatively speaking. Um, and the substantive laws changed. So residential tenants were given a whole package of rights which landlords could not contract out of. So that old law, old contract law, the freedom of contract principles, the, you know, typical of the, the 19th century uh, liberal state, um, were swept away. So landlords were subject to a whole array of uh, non-negotiable obligations uh, in relation to the security of the premises and the giving of rent receipts in the quality of the premises they had to be fit for uh, habitation. And these are rights that are um, meaningfully asserted. I did an empirical study a few years back and found that um, tenants are active litigants before the Tribunal of New South Wales. I'm sure it's a similar picture here. Um, because it's, it's cheap to access, um, uh, very cheap uh, filing fees, you only have to wait for maybe a month to get on to the, into the tribunal. And tenants generally are more successful when they bring matters against landlords than landlords are against tenants. And it happens tenants tend to be, you know, they're fired up, it is their home after all, they tend to be well prepared. And uh, the government has put in resources to support tenants to the Department of Fair Trading. Um, they give a phone advice, but also there's a tenants union that gets government money and legal aid money, um, as well as tenancy advice services. So there's a um, dramatically different picture uh, has eventuated as a result of these recommendations by a commission to governments which didn't commission the report. It was very convincing. Uh, and again, these are important welfare state initiatives, and uh, they're particularly important for um, tenants because, in, in, the, in the context of poverty, because um, um, a large proportion of tenants are poor. A large proportion, a very large proportion of the poor uh, are tenants, and so anything that helps, that makes tenancy more secure, that makes the conditions of homes of tenants. Uh, more improved um, is uh, is obviously a, is a step. It's a small step, but it's an important step in addressing poverty. As far as consumer law is concerned, again, we've now got an Australian consumer law, but states it's a nationwide consumer law. But before that, um, the, the various states and territories introduced consumer protection legislation, unfair contract legislation, and so on. Um, following directly on from the um, Sackville Report and the punitive powers that courts had and cre uh, creditors had against people, even in respect of short, m minuscule loans, um, have been largely abolished. Imprisonment for debt has effectively been um, removed. Um, so that, again, a, a, major, a major success in that respect. Um, Social Security, again, um, uh, at the time of establishment of the Social Security Appeals Tribunal, this idea that Social Security is a right, not a privilege, um, and a, like, a right to legal representation is possible. Um, again, these rights of, in recent years have been, have been cut back, but um, that tr significant transformation followed directly from the report. And then as far as the criminal law, um, is concerned. There was a, a widespread abolition across the different states and territory, territories of the uh, uh, offences of drunkenness, vagrancy, begging, and so on. Um, starting in New South Wales in, in 1979, the uh, Rand government introduced the right, and that was largely replicated across other, across other uh, jurisdictions. Okay, so that, that's generally a good, a good news story. A lot of reforms that, that we now take for granted um, in 1975 just um, were um, barely imagined. It was barely imaginable that, that so much legal reform would take place in such a comparatively short space of time. Um, so that might lead one to conclude that uh, um, yeah, there was a major assault on 
inequality and poverty um, as a result of the report. And sadly, um, that's not the case. Just uh, and just fast forwarding to 2015, this is a report of the Australian Council of so Social Service, and they're basically relying on um, data that uh, Australian Bureau of Statistics data um, to look at the extent of um, wealth uh, uh, and income inequality uh, today. And of course, I don't need to tell you, uh, it's, not, uh, it, it's not a particularly good story. Um, the, the basic um, um, story is that we've got a very um, a profoundly unequal society. Uh, in 2013, to 14, the, the Gini coefficient, this is the measurement of the distribution of uh, wealth and poverty. Uh, it's, an ex it's a very, very high 0 0.605. Um, and that, uh, that represents, I don't know if you can see it back there, it's, it's blurry enough for me down here. Um, the the right-hand uh, pie chart, which is the distribution of wealth in 2015, shows that the highest fifth of the population um, own 41%, so, sorry, 61% of all wealth, um, uh, whereas the, um, uh, the next uh, quintile owns 21%, and the lowest quintile, bottom 20%, own a mere 1% of Australia's wealth, and the next 20% own a mere 5%. So 40% of the population own 6% of the wealth. Um, so there's a very bad maldistribution of wealth, um, which has happened now 40 years after the, um, the Poverty Commission's reports. Uh, if you shift to income, the distribution of income, uh, again, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a bad news story. The highest fifth Top 20% own 40% of the, or get 40% of all income, um, whereas the bottom uh, quintile, the lowest 20%, get a mere 8% of um, of income. And in terms of Gini coefficients, there's been a, a gradual um, uh, deterioration over time. Um, 20 years ago, it was 0.302. Um, 20 years later, it's 0.333. So the general trend is um, is is downward, um, and uh, the um, in terms of the the, the actual um, numbers, uh, there are now 13.3% uh, of the population of Australians are living in poverty. So it's um, just over one point, um, one point one out of every eight Australians is um, is in poverty. Um, so that uh, the extent of the, um, the level of poverty and maldistribution of wealth is significantly worse than it was in 1975. Um, but you can't blame that on the uh, um, on, on these reports.